update with Sasha Martinengo. As always, our Formula One update is brought to us. Compliment Pirelli and Tiger Wheel and Tire. We are waiting for uh, Pirelli and Tiger Wheel and Tire to tell us who the winner of the trip to the 2014 United States Grand Prix is. And then we'll phone them. That'll be fun. Yes. Now let's turn our attention to the world of Formula One. A couple of short little things that uh, you need to know. Um, and that is the Mercedes Formula One team has appointed Pascal Werlein as their reserve driver. Now Pascal Werlein uh, won the DTM race over this past weekend at the Lausitzring and has become the youngest ever winner of a DTM race. And uh, I think looks good to be the Formula One test pilot for Mercedes. So very, very good news for Pascal Werlein. I'm gonna get on to what can and what cannot be said during um, discussions between the driver and the uh, pit wall in a couple of seconds from now. But first, there is smoke and there is fire. And when it comes to the world of Formula One, where there is smoke, there usually is fire. And the big talk at the moment is Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Vettel, Red Bull, and Ferrari. Now, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to try and work out what I'm talking about, but give you just a rundown of what is um, going on at the moment. <clears throat> just after the Italian Grand Prix, and the Italian Grand Prix usually is very significant for the Ferrari team, and that is that they usually make the announcement of their driver lineups for the forthcoming years now we know that Alonso has an agreement till the end of 2016 and we know that Kimi Raikkonen has uh, a contract to the end of 2015 but things have gotten a little more complicated for example Luca de Montezemolo stepped down from Ferrari as their chairman and also over that same weekend unfortunately the death of Emilio Botten who's the chairman who was the chairman of Santander now, Santander, of course, is the Spanish bank, and under his leadership, they have a market capitali capitalization of over $120 billion. Now, they entered into the world of Formula One back in 2007 when Fernando Alonso went and joined the McLaren organization, and Alonso and Santander put their money behind there. Didn't last very long, and uh, when... Fernando Alonso decided to jump ship eventually, go back to Renault, and then, of course, go to Ferrari. Then Mr. Botten decided to follow Fernando Alonso. Now, with the death of Mr. Botten, they do have a contract with Ferrari that runs until the end of 2017. But now, Mr. Botten's daughter, Anna, has taken over the chairpersonship of Santander, and it's a question of whether or not she will continue with her, fa her father's passion for the sport. So the big questions now are, Santander, yes, have an agreement to stay with Ferrari. But Fernando Alonso has hinted that he might be persuaded to go and join McLaren again with the new Honda engine that comes in next year. The question is, is how will McLaren afford to pay Fernando Alonso? which means that maybe Anna has to take some of her Santander money or find some more Santander money and pass it on to McLaren again. The other talk is Fernando Alonso is not getting any younger. So what do Ferrari do in the long term? Kimi Raikkonen must probably spend one more year at Ferrari and then call it a day. The likes of Fernando Alonso, he could stay there, but Sebastian Vettel would be a very good bet for Ferrari. He's a lot younger and let's put it uh, this way, he's not having the best of times at Red Bull. So, the million dollar question at the moment is, will Ferrari be able to coax Sebastian Vettel to come to Ferrari as soon as next year? And will McLaren be able to get their hands on Fernando Alonso? Big, big questions, not a lot of answers at the moment. Now let's go on to the FIA's ruling and their clampdown where it comes to team radios. As far as I can understand it, this is the way that it goes. The teams are not allowed to give any instructions to the, um, the drivers, okay, where in terms of strategy, 
However, there's some leeway has been given apparently up until the Japanese Grand Prix for teams to get better fail-safe systems in place so that the drivers can cope with areas like tire pressure, brake wear, and gearbox learning. Those kind of things. And the problem there is, is that if the driver has an issue with the car, are they able to then go and ask the team for some guidance? For example, we saw it at the Grand Prix where uh, Nico Rosberg's car, bro uh, um, Lewis Hamilton's car broke down. They told him to do various things, and uh, he managed to get the car going again. So <clears throat> what is allowed is acknowledgement that a driver message has been heard, lap or sector time detail, lap time detail of a competitor, gaps to a competitor during a practice session or race. Just by the way, these now um, are enforced in all of the free practice sessions qualifying and the race they're allowed to say push hard push now you'll be racing so and so or similar helping with warning of traffic they're allowed to do as well during a session or the race giving the gaps between cars in qualifying puncture warning tire choice at the next pit stop they're allowed to do number of laps with a, com uh, a competitor has done on a set of tires tire specification of a competitor Indication of potential problem with a competitor's car during a race. Competitor's car. Information concerning a competitor's likely race strategy. Yellow flags, blue flags, safety car deployment and other cautions. What is not allowed, and listen to this because there's a lot of them. Sector time detail of a competitor. Adjustment of power unit settings. Adjustment of power unit settings to derate the systems. Adjustments of gearbox settings. Learning of gears of the gearbox. Balancing of the state of charge of batteries. Information of fuel flow. Information of level of fuel saving, etc., etc. So basically anything to do with strategy is not allowed. So it's up to now the driver to work out how much fuel they've been using, what the wear on the, the brake wear or temperatures are, um, etc etc which means that now the FIA are going to have to have 22 other people listening to every single message that is said between the driver and the pit in order to figure out whether it's coded whether or not it's not coded and whether or not it is allowed this also <clears throat> by the way applies to the Formula One <clears throat> excuse me the Formula One pit boards as well so the pit boards, they can't just sit there and go uh, pit uh, P1 and then go talk seven, something like that. So listen, it, it could be quite interesting because we could see drivers running out of fuel. We could see drivers running too long on tires, et cetera, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> whether or not it's, it's going to be effective, we will have to wait and see. But that is basically what they can and cannot do from this weekend onwards um, with certain specifications allowed until the Japanese Grand Prix. The F1 Update. The F1 Update with Sasha Martinengo.